Hey, everybody, welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am Fiona and I am joined by the eye wiggling Dr. Matt Lyon. Great to be here. <laughs> Get better on my intros. You're so good at those. Uh, we thought today we would cover the really super important topic of just getting family and friends on board. We've been a um, advocate for you in your diagnosis and recovery, um, rather than being a hindrance. Um, yes. we, we know that sometimes they can be. <laughs> so we wanted to dig on that and how to get your family and friends on board with just if you're making some dietary or lifestyle changes, just to make that integration easier for you. Um, yeah. You yeah, I mean, having having your, your tribe around you that really supports you um, on a base level, right? Like people who support your life choices because you've got to eat an alkaline diet to heal your body, and um, you don't want people who are like, "Why are you doing that? Let's go get some Big Macs." <laughs> no disrespect to McDonald's, but that's not part of our program. Yeah, so like have people that on that level, like that support us and are like, okay, yeah, I'll take part in that too. Um, and at another level, I think people who just can sort of see the best of us and encourage us and also hold a higher vision for us, um, because that's important if we go back to our quantum physics video of you know, how we see ourselves and how other people. So yeah, your, your, your tribe uh, is super important. Yeah, and I think, you know, I know for me, when I was first diagnosed with MS and you know, I ate fairly well, but I made some pretty drastic changes to my diet. And what was really, really helpful was Duncan mm. made the same changes and he ate the same way I did. So there was never any food in the house that wasn't on the plan that I was following. Like we just don't have it. And one of the best things Duncan ever did for me is when we went out for dinner, as I was, I'm a bit of a people pleaser. So as I was getting better at this and saying, you know, are you sure that's got no dairy in it? Is that actually gluten free? You know, cause I can't have that stuff. Duncan, you know, if I would sometimes forget to ask or I was too embarrassed to make a scene, he would. He'd be like, she can't have any gluten or dairy. Like not even a little bit, like she'll end up in hospital if you do it. And if someone tried to serve me something with any of that in there, he would literally ninja it out of their hands and so that made you know in the beginnings as i was um really incorporating this into my lifestyle that made such a massive difference to have him feel like he was on my team and he was an advocate for me um and i know for a lot of people and a lot of my patients that come through the clinic one of the things they struggle the most with is that their partners are not willing to make the changes or go on the dietary changes that they are which means that there's alcohol still in the household or there's gluten or ice cream in the freezer and it's much harder for you to stick to and have conviction because we know how addictive food is right unless those things are out of the house and you've got an advocate so i guess we um, need to talk about how do you get your partner on board to be as amazing as duncan was um, and how you get them to eat hopefully very similarly to how you are so you can be the best version of yourself and heal yeah you know Kyle, I, I really like to you were saying that it's so important to develop self-esteem around asking for what we need oh, that's and right. yeah i think that's just a really good point so with your with your peeps with your tribe with your family um really taking ownership I think it's just so important. I can only speak from my own experience. It is impossible to change other people's perceptions. I can influence and positively lead. And if I'm coming from a place of empowered self-esteem, it will have an effect. And then people are usually influenced by like the positive energy of that or the positive effect that it has on my life. But I have learned, because like you, as many healers are, we're people pleasers. And I have had to learn to let go of people pleasing and not necessarily not being a pleasing person, but sacrificing what I need for the benefit of the whole, especially when it comes to your health. And if you're recovering from kidney disease, I think part of the medicine practically is just making sure people are on board and support you. But part of it, I think the deeper energetic healing, and I hope that doesn't sound too woo woo, is learning how to take responsibility for myself and then having the self esteem to say, hey, this is what I need. No, I don't do gluten. No, I don't do dairy. Thank you. I appreciate it, but no. And then if someone, I, I like how you mentioned too, you know, it's so important that the people that we love and around us the most 
um, support it, you know, because our tribe kind of determines our vibe. And it's not that we're victims of anybody around us, but we talked about this in another video. The folks that I spend the most time with, I become like them. <laughs> so, you know, if I'm around people who are cynical, and don't believe in the body's ability to heal itself or that food is medicine or that the body can self-heal and self-regulate and that Western medicine is not the only story. It can sort of bring your vibe and confidence down. And if our confidence low, we kind of get a disempowering meaning about healing from kidney disease. So yeah, it's super huge. And I think what I'm taking away from this conversation is that self-esteem is big and if it's a trouble if it's a, if it's a hard thing just get help and talk to people whether it's a counselor or a friend or a advisor or a guide or a coach who can help you see your blind spots around really asking for what you need yeah and look one of the things i do with patients and it's important that you find a um, naturopath a chiro or an acupuncturist or a nutritionist that properly understands how to eat healthfully for kidney disease and if you're part of our kidney disease solution program tribe feel free to take the book along and get them to read it but what I do is I get if my patient's partner isn't being supportive or they won't eat the same I get the partner to come into the consult mm -hmm. and then I speak to the two of them and so I become my patient's advocate and I say look Dr Matt has chronic kidney disease and it's really important that he follows this alkalizing diet in fact it's so imperative that eating a high meat and drinking lots of alcohol or sugar it's really going to put him backwards it's going to send those numbers backwards we're going to send him down the pathway of potentially being more likely to have to go through dialysis and and or maybe a transplant to negate that we know how powerful diet is so one of the ways that you can support your partner is by eating the same. And look, that doesn't mean that you have to eat the same the whole time. If you go out and you're catching up with friends and your partner's not there, you can cheat, but you're not doing it in front of them. But while you're with them and you're in the house, keeping the food as clean as possible, making sure that you don't, you admit the foods in the fridge that, that Matt can't have would be really helpful and really supportive in his recovery. Is that something that you think you could commit to? And I ask that deadpan question. And if they say no, I say, well, I, you know, I understand that. Could you maybe just do it for the first couple of months while Matt gets more confident in understanding what he can and can't eat and he can build on his self-worth, self-esteem and boundaries that you just alluded to so he can say no himself? Would, be, would that be something that you're willing to commit to for a couple of months for Matt? And the side effect is that you'll feel better as well. So every now and then I will get someone that will say no and that does happen and then I say to my patient, well, maybe for the first couple of months, you you know, depending on the person, you move in with a parent that will do it. I, I'm pretty strict on this stuff. And I, you know, I have a very serious conversation with the partner if they say no, um, about how really, how committed they are to supporting their partner be well. So I think that's, yeah, you wanted to, I could see you, you're chomping. Sorry, I had to get the, the light was bugging. You know, um, <laughs> So my wife is a marital therapist and it's fascinating to me, the role of dynamics and relationship. Like we all have, like every couple is kind of in process and, and there's a spectrum of health in that. And so even those of us that have healthy relationships, you know, we're going to go through our challenges and ups and downs, but man, the, the importance of having a positive synergistic symbiotic giving sort of relationship within your core um, relationship or relationships is, is really important. So I just yeah. think you bring up a really good point. And yeah, you know, it's what's so amazing about, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but not right. Because any chronic disease, any life challenge, but especially chronic illness, it sort of has this medicinal effect of bringing up everything else in our life that we need to work on. Absolutely. absolutely. It's that hero's and so, journey. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're bumping into like, oh my God, I've got issues in my relationship or, oh my God, I need to learn how to stand up for myself. What's so cool is that's part of your healing too. And it may seem distinct or different from your glomerular filtration rate or your creatinine levels, but it's all part of the process. And if you go back and watch our video we did on, um, we talked about the hero's journey and the difference between healing and curing. 
if you are bumping up against challenges in this arena, whether it's with the people you're hanging with or asking for what you need, or you got issues with your hubby, the, it's grist for the mill to create more healing for yourself. And that's important. You know, relationships are a super big part of healing. I'm trying, I feel like there's a study. Well, I know, well, look, yeah, while you think of the study, you think of your study, but that's it. I'm so glad you said that. It's so true that when you go start to go through your healing process, all this stuff will come up because it's all for healing, right? Because now yeah. your attention, we spoke about this, is now on healing. So everything that needs healing comes up. Definitely what happened and is what happened for me through my journey. But one of the things that I had to deal with, and I'm, um, I do find this in a lot of people with chronic disease, and, and Matt, I'd love to hear if you see the same thing in your clinical practice is, but generally people with chronic health conditions, and I know this was the case for me, have very poor boundaries. So they're people pleasers. They tend to say yes to things that they want to say no to. They tend to let people impose on them um, in positions that don't feel right to them, but they don't know how to say no. And it may be from a parent, a partner, a child, you know, a friendship group. And one of the things that I had to learn to do, and it's taken me a really long time, was to learn to set better boundaries of what was okay for me and what wasn't. And I read a great book by Nancy Levin called uh, Setting Boundaries Will Set You Free. And it was, that for me was a real it was great. It wasn't anything I didn't know, but it was a process book that I could go through to start. It had a bit of a 12-step process in it to help implement better boundaries. And that really was such a huge thing for me. And Matt and I um, used to work together and do this a lot of travel around the world. And one of the things that I found was I didn't have a great boundary with that because I was saying yes and working these crazy hours while dealing with the chronic health problem. Being from Australia, you know, I'm on flights traveling really long distances. Every Everywhere is 24 hours. Everywhere every was at least 24, 24 hours. And it was it was every, it was once a month, you know, and, and as much as I loved it and connecting with people like Matt and things like that, I also, you know, I could have set better boundaries around that and I would have had a better outcome. And in that, I would have been able to give more and be a better person and those sort of things. So it, there's a study that Brene Brown did. And if you don't know who Brene Brown is, look her up. She's just such an amazing American Texan woman from Austin, Texas there, y'all. And she says um, she could studies um, empathy and self-worth and um, uh Shame, shame researcher. And the big study that she found was that the people that were the most wholehearted, so people that were the most heart connected giving were the ones that had the best boundaries because when they knew how to set a boundary, they could be more wholehearted because they had more energy and vitality to give because they were working within constraints that worked for themselves and they didn't end up with chronic diseases. I found that, that for me, reading that I was a- got chills. I just got chills when you said that. Yeah, it was a game changer for me. Yeah, that's going to set some people free. Um, here's what I was thinking of. Do, do you remember the book? Uh, so Gabor Mate, medical physician, he wrote a book called When the Body Says No. Oh, yes. It's yeah, old, yeah. Old, old Great book, right? So if anybody just wants a good view of the mind-body connection, through the lens of someone who knows conventional science and research really well it's amazing and he talks he goes through and talks about a bunch of different diseases and um talks about sort of the behavioral or characterological or psychological components that can drive disease and the boundary piece and the um or the lack of boundaries was a huge piece in a number of different illnesses. Yeah. And so, you know, I've talked about in other videos and Fiona's been very um, beautifully transparent in sharing her story. So I was really sick for uh, about two and a half, three years. And, you know, prior to that point, I'd been such a busy clinician, but in my mind, being a healer and doing the right thing and being loving was always saying yes. Yeah. And so I had this really, mat, this re very large practice set. I mean, some days I would look out in the waiting room and, you know, the, the waiting room line would be out the door. And I, and I thought, okay, well, this is what success is. And this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. And so when I couldn't say no, my body said no. 
Yeah. And a big part of getting my people and my family and my tribe involved, which at that point was my wife and not so much my kids at that point, because they were really young, but my staff and being like, I know I haven't been the best at setting boundaries, but right now I have to, or my body's going to. So here's how things are going to change and to really enroll people in that. And this will sound stark. And I'm definitely uh, endeavored to be a very giving and loving and forgiving person. But there also comes a point where toxic relationships may just have to go. And <clears throat> sometimes the most loving thing that I can do for myself and that other person is to be like, thank you and no. Because, you know, I had this therapist when I was sick. And he'd always say, Matt, life is this. I'd be like, what are you talking about? And he'd be like, love? and boundaries yeah and i'll never forget that gesture because i i this was sort of my currency here yeah yeah and this yeah. felt dangerous and not safe and you know i did for you're another a bad person if you do this you're a terrible yeah, person yeah, totally and from you know our own childhood programming and depending on what culture you're from it can be a different thing um, but yeah so so this is really important and the body says no when I can, or another way to say it that I, I remember him saying is that the body will weep the tears that we don't allow ourselves to feel. So there's something about this. I love how you said the wholehearted. Mm. That really struck me. I got chills on that because I am familiar with Brene Brown, but I was not familiar with that. And um, yeah. that's really cool. That's healing too, you know? So um, when we talk yeah. about healing journey, it true integral medicine, leaves no part of the self behind. Say that again, because that's such a key point. Yeah. So true integral medicine leaves no part of the self behind. Now, kidney disease solution is a very holistic way to look at things. And it's so important to have that because this may seem superfluous to your labs or to the fact that you're really scared that you're about to go on dialysis or you are on dialysis or you're afraid of transplantation. But in real, the deepest healing, we don't leave any part of the self behind. So this is a really good conversation, actually. I know we started in one direction, but it's kind of like blossomed like a flower into a bunch of other things here. It's really, yeah. really tough. And I think some really key practical things that you can do is to walk away from this and write down the things that you know you need help or support with mm. from friends and families to implement. So whether that be implementing the alkaline diet, whether to make sure you drink your Nana's tea enough or you're juicing or you're exercising to boost your clotho levels, if you've watched our clotho video, or that you're taking, your, if you are decided to take nutraceuticals or herbal medicine, that you're taking those regularly, that you're monitoring your um, urinary pH, whatever it is that's part of your program that you know that works for you for health, um, meditating, breathing, to have that written down and have a checklist where you can hold yourself accountable, but get an accountability accountability buddy and feel free to reach out on our community on facebook page and ask there or whether that's a partner a child or a, a friend where you can make sure that you're accountable to to do that then having a really real conversation with your partner about where you know you'll struggle so where it's i may not be able to do it because i won't exercise so you say to your husband or your partner do you think you could go walking with me a couple of times a week, I need to boost my clotho levels. Or do you think um, we can make sure, like I said, that we have no um, alcohol in the household? And if you decide to drink, that's fine, but you just don't do it while you're home with me. And so you start to set some boundaries where you know you may fall down in your ability to implement the changes that you need to do. And you get, you involve your family and friends in your healing because I feel like that was one of the things I didn't do very well with Duncan because I'm so, Duncan's my husband and, and um, part of our team here, but I'm so independent and pig-headed and stubborn and doing things myself that I didn't really involve him in my healing because I didn't want to burden him. And what I realise now, there's this beautiful book that he actually got me for Christmas called Penguin Bloom, and it's an Australian story about a magpie that saves this woman who has a spinal cord injury and becomes a paraplegic. And the story is told from the husband. It's the wife that becomes a paraplegic. And it was beautiful for me to read from his perspective because all he wanted to do was love and support her. He didn't want to do anything else. And I shifted my mindset in that moment from I'm a burden and a pain and I may wreck Duncan's ability to live a full life to 
actually, all Duncan wants to do is support me. And if I let him do that, he then becomes part of the healing team. And not that he has to go on the journey with me, but he's just part of my team. And I still give him the freedom to do all the things that he needs to do to have his best life. But I don't exclude him from being part of my journey. And then he feels useful and he feels like he's helping. And I don't know, Matt, you can probably talk to that because obviously your beautiful wife, Lynn, and what, you know, what she does with her marriage counselling is far more of an expert than I am. But I feel like well, having that team so important. That's spot on what you said. I was really heartfelt. Um, you know, the thing that occurred to me too is that whether you're watching this or, you know, Fiona and I's respective healing journeys, I can 100% say that by having these real conversations and by learning how to be more vulnerable and more authentic and more transparent and have better boundaries, it's brought a healing into the bigger family circle. You know, whenever a chronic disease runs through a house, it affects everybody in the family. Like it just affects everybody in the family. And so to not acknowledge that is, you know, I mean, it's akin to the pink elephant in the room and whatever is not acknowledged, that's what's going to kind of leak that that energy that can really bring people down. And, and then sort of shame is underneath the surface because people with chronic disease, I know I have this, often will feel tons of shame about their condition. So, and then if, if loved ones aren't also enrolled in that process, they're also missing an opportunity to find their own healing. And that by me or Fiona being authentic in this situation, or you watching this, learning to be authentic and ask what you need, you have no idea the positive impact this might have on someone else. Yeah. And you know, if that's not the you know, if someone that you're with isn't willing to have that conversation or go there, that's that's a different piece, and that's okay too. But yeah, I mean, this can bring out healing in the whole family. And I don't know about you, Fiona, but I can say that through the process, uh, both Lynn and I are better parents. Uh, we're better communicators. You get so much more clear on what's really important in life. Um, mm -hmm. All of which gets just to the deeper essence of what it means to be a human being and to grow in love. And that's, to me, healing. And that was the role that disease had in my life. I know that. I know that. And um, so anyway, good stuff. Yeah. So that's so true of everything you just said. And it comes back to what I think a point that you're going to hear Matt and I drive in a lot of the videos that we do is that healing is such or a disease is such an opportunity to grow as a person. And it's so much more than just being labeled or diagnosed. You know, there's this gold mine of opportunity that comes with having a chronic health condition from been having better physiology and better markers all the way down to having better relationships and setting better boundaries and being a more wholehearted person. They're all, they should all be side effects of what we call true healing. And I think that's the essence of what, you know, we've always wanted to do at the Kidney Coach and, and part of the Kidney Disease Solution is that you realise that you've got this opportunity to heal on so many levels. So getting Spot your family. Oh, I love how you said pig-headed, pig-headed. For y'all Americans, that's pig-headed. You know, one, this last thing I wanted to close out with, when you were just sharing that, Fiona, you know, I was really inspired because, you know, you realize when we have better relationships, um, we have better relationships with ourselves. And so then the thoughts I'm going to think and the feelings I'm going to feel are going to be more up-level, which mm -hmm. is to say more positive, more authentic, more whole. And to quote um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, that, that thought feeling loop kind of creates the energy mm -hmm. that is in us and around us. And, and, you know, Einstein himself said that energy is the sole governing agent of matter. So while it may seem disconnected, this plays a huge role in your body's ability to adapt to stress and to heal. And then on that deeper sort of maybe spiritual level, it's, it's part of this hero's journey that you're on that's kind of ordained to bring out the real you. And yeah. I think that's really cool and to get the best relationships possible. Because at the end of the day, you know, there was this great study. Oh my God, we just keep talking about these studies. But the, the nurses study that looked at people in their, their final moments, you know, what did people, you know, what did people talk about and what did they regret, you know, in their final moments? Nobody, it was a study of nurses, I believe it was in the United States, Nobody was like, I wish I'd worked more. I wish I'd had more businesses. I wish I'd had more money. It was all about more time with loved ones, having better relationships. A big one was not letting friendships fall off. Mm -hmm. I think one of the main ones was living your life with passion. 
right? Yeah. Choosing yeah. to live life with passion rather than holding back because we're afraid to fail or not be loved or whatever the story is. But all of these things, this is the juice of healing. So sometimes, at least my case, I needed to get whacked with the two by four of a life crisis to really bring that out so that um, that what really matters um, could be in the foreground of my life. One of my teachers um, used to say, nothing really is all that important, but everything matters. I like that. There is some like truth in that. Yeah. I think getting at a substance of life and uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, hopefully we've left you with some gems. If so, feel free to subscribe below. Head over to kidneycoach.com and you'll find a whole pile of research articles and information about the program, Dr. Matt, myself and Duncan. And we hopefully will see you next time. Take care. Bye. Ciao. Adios. Hasta luego.